Welcome to the Marvelous Moms Club podcast. Discover yourself, break out of mediocrity, and become the mom you've always aspired to be. Here's your host, Kirsten Tyrell. Have you guys ever had a person you're talking to and you just don't ever want it to end? You don't want the conversation to be over. You have so much in common. You just click and everything just, oh, this is how my conversation was with Jaylen. And I'm really excited for you to hear it. I'm really sorry that it's taken so long to get it up there because it's really good. And I love the perspective. I love when you can find women who get you and who are like, yeah, me too. I mean, there's the whole Me Too movement going on, but those words have been famous ever since Brené Brown said them in one of her books. And I love that she talked about the relatability of hearing somebody else be able to say me too with the same experiences you've been through. There's nothing that connects us quite in that way of knowing that somebody just gets us. And that's how I felt with Jaylin. I have tons, 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 tons that I can learn from her. She's been doing what I do a lot longer than I have. And, but it's still just great to see, you know, what, what can happen and what has happened for her and her dreams. So if you're in direct sales, if you're in lip sense, especially you're going to love this episode because Jaylin has made stuff happen. She's become one of the top earners in all of Senegents and she's just really successful. So sit back and relax or take notes. Definitely take notes. And this one's going to rock your world. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm really excited today to be joined by the beautiful, amazing, wonderful, talented... <laughs> How's that for an introduction? Jalen so nice. Schroeder. <laughs> we are internet friends and now we will be real friends because the podcast is what brings people together. So welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So give everybody who may not already know who you are from social media world a little bit of background on you as far as mom, life, how, how old is your little girl and baby on the way, all that good juicy stuff. Okay, so I have a two and a half year old, um, and she is crazy. Everyone told <laughs> me to beware of two year old and three year old stage, and holy moly, it is coming on strong. So she's giving me a run for my money lately. Um, and then I am due in twenty five days. Nobody's counting with my yeah. second, um, and he, it's a boy. So we're gonna awesome. have one of each. And I am so excited. That's so fun. I'm sure you don't have anything like a paper chain or a countdown on your phone or anything, right? Like, <laughs> you have no idea. You're just along for the ride mean... of <laughs> <laughs> My sister's kind of in the same stage as you are. And it's just like, what is even the last two, three, four weeks of pregnancy for? Like, what's the point? Just get the baby out of me. Please let me be in labor. It's, it's terrible. It's like... I mean, and people will comment on my social media all the time, like my stories. I'm like, you, are you having a hard time breathing? Did you just like run? I'm like, no, I just walked five steps and I can't breathe. So <laughs> that is life right we're now. Yep. yep. Yeah. We all get that. I remember not knowing until like oh, 70, 80% way through my first pregnancy that that was a normal thing. Like even in the first trimester, I just remember feeling winded and it was just something about blood supply and all the weird stuff changing. And I was like, so I'm not just really lazy or really out of shape. It's like normal. It's okay. But yeah, now it makes just... you, <laughs> it makes you feel like t kind of terrible for a second, you know, cause you're like, I yeah. swear I'm not this out of shape, but really it's just because there's a human taking up all the space. So you can't breathe. So yes. it makes sense. <laughs> yes, exactly. All your organs are not your own anymore. Um, exactly. So a little bit of business background, because I know there's a lot of mompreneurs, a lot of girls who love the hustle listening to this. Give everybody a little background in Red Closet Diary and how that transitioned to lip sense and just kind of a little bit of the story. All right. So I started my blog a very long time ago. I mean, it's been, it's been a good amount of time. So I actually started it when I was first married, my first marriage. And kind of the reason behind starting it is I love fashion. I've always been into fashion, but my fashion is more like I would go to DI. I would thrift stuff. I would like just put these fun outfits together, super cheap mm -hmm. outfits. And people would always ask me like, where did you get that? Or how do you put that together? Or how are you confident wearing like stripes and leopard print together without feeling... <laughs> 
Like, I don't know, whatever. So, I mean, I would just get questions all the time. And so blogging was not really a thing back then. Like I said, I've been blogging for probably, I want to say like eight, nine, ten years. I can't remember mm-hmm. the exact date, but it's been a second. So I, my mom was like, hey, you should start a blog and I can do your pictures because she was just getting into photography and we can kind of be like a team and just, you know, have fun with it and blah, blah, blah. And, and I never had any intention of necessarily trying to like grow because Instagram had just barely started becoming a thing at that point. And I didn't even know that there was like business opportunity in it because it was a very new thing. So um, I started, yeah, I just started documenting my outfits. I look back now and die at some of the outfits <laughs> I put together as I'm sure most people do 10 years ago. Yes, but, I mean, for sure. It's, it's it's funny, but it's a little crazy to see you what I was putting together, right? You yes. Just, it made sense and the, at the time. Yes. And the funny thing is it's, it was totally me and I'm, I'm still like that. I just have, a, I'm a little better at putting stuff together, but <laughs> so that's kind of where my, um, my whole blog thing started. I um, ended up getting divorced from that first marriage and I took like a year break from my blog Mm -hmm. Um, And then I started getting back into it because I felt like it was, I mean, the Red Closet Diary, it's a, it's a diary and that's pretty much how I used it. Not only to share my outfits, but also kind of what I was going through because I, I going through divorce was really hard and it's something that I don't feel like a lot of people talk about. And especially in the community that I'm in, it's not something that's necessarily encouraged. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's not encouraged anywhere, of course, but. I just felt like I needed to have a place to talk about stuff like that because I know that there's people out there that are going through something and I'm one who needs to like get my feelings out. I can't just like, yeah. In. So I started my blog again. Um, I was single. I was literally having Ready to like, mingle. my neighbor guy friends. <laughs> yes. I was having like literally my neighbor guys, friends, whatever were taking my blog pictures for me. So those were even worse than when I first started. But, but wait, I mean, I like you basically, you basically were training future Instagram husbands, though, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was, I you was were giving them, them skills. Yeah. Yes, they're like Absolutely. totally prepped now. That's like a yes. qual- that's a qualification nowadays. <laughs> it so really yeah, is. I mean, <laughs> so I mean, I started up blogging again, and it it has never been like a crazy full time um, like income for me necessarily. Mm -hmm. I do, I do it because I love it and there is money involved, of course, but for me, it's just never, it's never taken off to the point of where it's become something like crazy for me. So it's something I've enjoyed. It's something I've shared and it's been a really good outlet for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see, lip sense came into my life about four months after Charlie was born. Um, at that point I was blogging. That's Mm -hmm. all I was doing because I quit my job, my full-time job a month before Charlie was born. And I was going through a very, very, very rough time. Um, cause I've worked my whole life. I've been a very busy person my whole life. And Mm -hmm. I went from having like these goals, having a job, moving up in the world, blah, 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 to nothing and being a mom, which is of course a lot of something. It's amazing. But for it's me, different. it was so, it's so different because, I mean, I just remember sitting there and I, um, I mean, just breastfeeding. It's like, it's like a full-time job. I just remember sitting yeah. on the couch and I'm like, is this my life? Like, is this <laughs> what I'm going to be doing now? I had no reason to like put makeup on or to put outfits on. I mean, I was in a, I was in a pretty big, like, and I, I wouldn't say that I, had full on postpartum depression, but I definitely had the baby blues and I was definitely questioning like, what am I going to do with my life? Because for me, Mm -hmm. since I was little, I just remember being in, I mean, elementary school, junior high and being asked when you're, you know, you're new in the class and they're like going around and saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? I just remember a lot of like most girls saying, I want to be a mom. And I just never, that was never my answer. I always wanted Mm -hmm. to work either in the fashion industry or 
I wanted to have a business. I mean, that was always my answer. So that um, lips and sentence kind of came into my life at the perfect time because I just remember it was, I was just in not a great place and mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't even looking for anything. I was blogging. I was enjoying that. But this kind of like literally slapped me in the face and I originally <laughs> signed up just to get a discount mm-hmm. um, on the product because like I said, not having a full-time income, I, it was hard because I couldn't just go like buy stuff, you know, I mean, I had to ask yeah. my husband or be like, Hey, I want to buy 50 lipsticks. You cool with that? There's no way he would have, he would have been like, yeah, go for it. So I totally signed up because I wanted to get like a huge discount and buy all the colors that I wanted. And then people started asking me like, oh, where did you get that? Like, it's not coming off. That's cool. Blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of when I just jumped right in and I realized like, hey, this is, this is fun. It's giving me a reason to get up and put makeup on in the morning. It's Mm -hmm. giving me a reason to be social. I mean, I kind of like had, I felt like I had somewhat more of a purpose at that point. So as soon as I saw the potential, I kind of just ran with, with that, like full on, like, I don't even know, full on speed ahead, ran with it. So that's where that came in. And then I also, um, I started my boutique, let's see, about a year ago. And Mm -hmm. that was more just because, like I said, I'm I'm in love with the fashion industry. I've always wanted to have my own shop. And it was a perfect timing because there was no necessarily pressure. I wasn't doing it to make an income necessarily. Mm-hmm. But since it had been my dream, I kind of, I just kind of went for it. So yeah, I slowed down on that when I got pregnant and, you know, stuff stops fitting you. <laughs> and yeah, so I kind of took a little break on that. It still is like going, but... I haven't done a ton with that lately, but those are kind of my three businesses and they're all named after each other, all named after my blog, The Red Closet Diary. So that's kind of how I got started with all of those. I love it. It's amazing how just starting with something as an outlet can turn into a full on, because for those of you guys listening who don't know, Jalen is very, very, very successful. Like it's always awkward to talk about your own success. So I don't expect you to be like, and now I'm like, really, really popular in lip sense and Cenegents. And I'm like, really big deal. But she is. Um, For anybody who's in the world of Cenegents, or even if you're not, like, I think it still sounds impressive to list your title and accomplishment. So what is your title in Cenegents at this point? Okay, so I have to always remember this. So my (laughs) title is Ruby Majesty. And that means that my team um, did $26 million in sales last year. So wow. it's kind of complicated to explain for those who are not in the yeah network marketing world. But yeah, so my, I mean, my team killed it last year. It was an awesome year. So I'm very I lucky to be where I'm of, at. Yeah, regardless of knowing the terminology, that still sounds really, really amazing. So well, I mean, it's a lot of stuff to sell. That's a lot of yeah. skincare and lipstick to sell. So it for is. Sure. That's a ton. That is a ton. And like amazing that you built a team like that just from wanting to have an outlet and just from wanting to like play with colors and have something, a yes. reason to kind of get ready for the day every day. And so I always like to kind of speak a little bit to the budding entrepreneurs because I know this is listening to podcasts is really where I got my inspiration to start an online business and really start to understand the possibilities that are out there. And so if you had to give like, it doesn't even have to be like some original piece of advice, but what would you even say to yourself a few years ago before all of this kind of erupted into your life? And what like key things do you wish you had known then that maybe would have avoided you some of the struggle or just would have helped you realize the potential that you actually had? So I would probably, I mean, my answers, like you said, are going to be very like probably ones that you've heard, but I think, um, I don't even know if this is a piece of advice, but I want to say mindset has been such a huge thing for me and for my team and just everything in general, because it's so easy as women, especially to doubt ourselves and to doubt our Mm -hmm. worth and to doubt everything like as a mom 
as an entrepreneur, whatever it is, it's so easy to even have a bad day and be like, well, I suck. Like this isn't going to work out. So, and I see it every, like I see it every day and especially being in this industry um, and working with as many people as I do on my team. I just see all the time. I see people quitting um, and giving, I mean, even giving their dreams like a week and then saying, oh, it's not going to work out for me. Um, I just feel Mm -hmm. like women get down on themselves so easy. So um, with me, I have like pretty major anxiety and something that's been very helpful helpful to me is personal development. And I want to encourage that first and foremost, um, just Mm -hmm. because I think it's important as a mom, as a wife, as an entrepreneur, even if you're not looking to start a business, it's so important to be working on yourself because you cannot take care of anyone else, including your family, including your business, whatever it is, until you have fully taken taken care of yourself. If you're trying to pour in other people's glasses without taking care of yourself first, like it just, it pretty much sucks you dry. And that's, a, that's when you get to the quitting point. So yeah, that's probably my first piece of advice. And then my second would be consistency. I probably, I scream this one from the rooftops to mm-hmm. pretty much <laughs> everyone who I come yeah. in contact with just because it's so important to be consistent in every single thing you do in life. Um, I mean, and even if it's not working out or if something's not going well or blah, 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 you have to be consistent. Um, doing something for a couple of weeks and then saying, oh, it's not going to work out for me. That's not consistency. Consistency is doing something consistently for a very long period of time. And I really do believe like with all of my heart, that if you're consistent in everything you do and you're giving 100%, that things will work out. Everyone's stories and journeys are different, and it could take someone a year of being consistent. It could take someone five years of being consistent. But the cool thing is if you know that you could reach, like, your dreams and potentially change your future, change your family's future, like, why would you not be consistent until you hit Showing that yeah. point? So. Right. I always tell my girls, don't quit before the miracle happens. I love that. That is such a good, that might be the title of your episode. It's That's so good. (laughs) (laughs) And I love that. And I hope everybody on my team is listening to this as well, because that's, that's definitely when you said scream from the rooftops, that's something I scream all the time because in any business, whether it's direct sales or not, like I think there's what that crazy statistic on how many businesses fail in the first year. And it's because they probably don't even make it through month one. And it's so easy to have the ambition. The feeling of excitement on what you can create is so, so, so good. But I think people, it's kind of like a relationship, right? Like when you're in love with your husband, when you fall in love and it's so exciting and new and it's an adventure, it's so good. And you think we're going to keep this forever. It's always going to feel this way. And then it doesn't, but it becomes something so much greater and so much deeper and more meaningful, but only because you're consistently showing up and bringing your A game or the very best that you have to offer that day, even if you don't want to. Like there's days I just don't want to be nice to my husband, but I am because <laughs> because he's the best. He's the most important thing to me. And I think if you cherish your business and you show up for it that way and like understand that it's not going to maybe feel like butterflies all the time but it's gonna become something so much more exciting than that and one year like you said two years five years however long it takes it's kind of like why would you stop because the alternative is not reaching your dreams so yeah yeah I love that you you said it perfectly well so did you it was really good advice (laughs) um so I actually just watched the funniest video today as I was like scrolling through Facebook and it was Christina Kuzmik. I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. Have you seen her on social media before? She I don't know. She you'd probably know her if you saw it, but she was in her, she was asking dads, how do you balance it all? And the dads were like, I've never been asked that before. And she's like, Why do women get asked all the time how they balance things and why are we expected to? So I'm not gonna ask you how you balance things, <laughs> but how I'm sure you've been faced with the mom guilt of it's just still not like a standard thing for the woman to be more I don't even want to say successful but just kind of more out there doing the hustle how have you and your husband kind of found that that flow that works for you guys where everybody feels like they're contributing and you're able to do it as a team how has that kind of fallen into place so I have been so lucky my husband was an entrepreneur for quite a while 
Um, Mm -hmm. And I think it was very helpful for, for me, especially to know that he understands what it takes to grow a business because I do see a lot of women getting into the business side of things or trying to grow and it takes time. It takes a lot of time and it takes a crap ton of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And if your spouse isn't on board, it makes it 10,000 times harder to get going. Um, When I first told my husband I was like going to actually do this, he said no um, just because he had – I mean, it's kind of a backstory to that, but he had a really bad taste in his mouth. And um, at the time he was working for an agency and his job literally was to manage and reputation management. So it's as bad as it sounds. He was Ugh. trying to make people, make network marketing companies, reputations better online because of their executive team, pretty much just not making good decisions and not being the best of people. Wow. So he just he just assumed they're all like that. And so he was not on board with me doing this at all. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much just told him, give me 30 days. Like, let's see what happens. But the good thing is, as soon as I started, and as soon as um, he kind of looked into the business more and he learned more about um, our executive team, he was on board. So yeah. when I just remember coming home, from my very first training, and this was this was like right before I decided I was going to actually do this, that I was going to put 100% in and I was going to grow a team and blah, blah, blah. And I woke him up because it was a training and then we had like a girls night. I came home late. I woke him up and I said, hey, like I want to do this. I feel strongly about this. I think this is like going to be great for me um, as a mom and as a person to have goals again, blah, blah, blah. And he, that's when he kind of like sat up and he's like, okay, so you know this is going to take time. You know this is going to take sacrifice. You know you're going to have to speak in front of people, which goes back to my anxiety. He knows me very well. Yeah. Um, and I said, okay, well, let's do it. So from the get-go, I've had his support and we both have understood that it's going to take sacrifice. And, you know, I did get kind of a lot of crap for this, but I did a lot of traveling my first probably a year, let's see, probably like a year and a half of being mm-hmm. in the business because we both saw the importance of like going to meet my team, going to train my team. And every time I left an area, I saw my team grow in that area. So mm-hmm. it was very important to me to like hit that fast why we, why we could and yeah. to really get out there and meet my team, create those relationships. And I did get a lot of crap about like leaving Charlie and all these things. But in my mind, it was like, I would rather sacrifice a year, like a couple weekends a month for a year and be able to provide a life for us that could potentially, I mean, it could change our lives. I would rather do yeah. that and know that I gave a hundred percent than look back and be like, Oh, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. Um, so yeah, so the first thing is my husband's support. Obviously, that's been amazing. Um, he's been such a good team player from the get-go. I had to learn to delegate from mm-hmm. um, pretty early on because I'm a control freak. And if I could <laughs> do it, I would do everything. I really would. I would. I mean, that's just my personality. I want things done fast and I want them done right. And yep. I put a lot on my shoulders at first. So it was that was something that was really hard for me. And even the CEO of our company, she teaches like, you need to be delegating. You can't do everything. You're one person. So my husband started helping a lot with Charlie. Like when he'd get home from work, he would be the one to help her um, like do dinner and blah, blah, blah. Cause he knew that I needed to be working. Yeah. Um, and then obviously when she'd go to bed, those were prime hours of getting stuff done. So, I mean, that was huge. So the husband thing, the delegating thing, and I'm huge on lists and planners, and I have to have things planned out. I have to be very intentional with my time because Mm -hmm. it's so easy to get on Facebook because most of us run our businesses online, and it's so easy to get on the internet, get on Facebook, get on Instagram, and get lost. And then you look at your phone an hour later, and you're like, oh, shoot, I just watched everyone's stories, but I didn't get any work done. So being, in, <laughs> being intentional. <laughs> yes. Like literal. So being, my own literal content. 
Yes, for sure. So, I mean, there was probably like eight months where I didn't scroll through my feed. I didn't look at stories. Like I, I focused on my business and I made Mm -hmm. sure that my things were done. Um, and like I said, it took a lot of sacrifice, but it's a lot of discipline. That's totally the word that comes to mind. It's, and you'd think it, I mean, I think everybody knows how hard that would be, but really like, it's easy to say it's the same as the consistency in your business and everything like that. But every Sunday for me, it's easy to say, I'm not going to be on my phone as much. I'm going to be really productive with my time. And what's the first thing you do out of habit is it's to pick up your phone and you think, I'm just going to scroll while I do this for two seconds and your time. So it does. It requires a ton, a ton, a ton of discipline, which I think a lot of people that combined with consistency are just, they lack and they wonder why things aren't happening. And that's why you've been able to be successful. And I think it's, it's so hard to be in that situation because I'm with you right there. I did a lot of traveling last year as well, just in my first year of building and I know I don't feel like I got a ton of flack from people if they were judging they were judging silently but it's so <laughs> hard to understand like why am I okay with this like am is this okay and there's really no rules there's no rules of like you're supposed to spend x amount of hours in the day with your children you have to sit on the floor for this many minutes a day to play with them like my kids were adjusted they felt nurtured they felt secure and if they they were a little older than Charlie is and so if they kind of noticed they started saying we really miss you I knew it was kind of time to pull back a little bit, but for the most part, like they had weekend fun time with dad and it was such a good experience for my kids to be nurtured by their father. So I I don't know. It's so hard because there's really no rules on who is in charge of what. And that's really kind of how we've built our family. And I don't know. It's okay. So I'll share this. I'll probably share this on a whole other episode, but I had this moment with my daughter on my lap and I was getting ready for like a team recruiting event or something. And I was trying to explain, she's, four. So she doesn't fully understand, but I was like, these, this is what's happening. This is what I'm doing. And it just hit me so hard. I am creating a legacy for my daughter. And it, and I've always thought it'd be really cool to just hand this business down to her and have her take it over. But just, she had just said, when I grow up, I want to be a mommy. And I was like, my daughter undoubtedly will be able to stay home with her children if she wants to. I'm creating that freedom. So I even think, if you're inclined to judge, it's really amazing to see. We can see right now the immediate success. Like you're doing really, really well with Senegents, but I think even trying to think of 20 years from now, the life you're creating long-term for your posterity is just mind blowing. So anyway, that's me on my soapbox. It's just so much bigger than this year and this week and this call and this training. It's such a long-term capacity to create abundance for everybody around you. I think it's awesome. Oh, it totally is. And I, like, I've already seen that in Charlie. I mean, she's two and a half. She's, we're still, I mean, she's putting, barely putting sentences together, Mm -hmm. but she notices. I mean, she notices me doing my training. She notices, notices me doing my, like, get ready with me, whatever it is. She notices those things. And like, as the more I think about it, I want her to have the option of doing whatever she wants. I don't want her going to school feeling like she has to be stuck in this this trap of going to school, getting a nine to five, being in debt for the rest of your life. Like if that's what she wants to do, 100%, I will support her in whatever she wants to do. But I do want her to know she has options and I want her to see that for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, that's huge for me. And I don't, I just don't want her to feel like she has to be doing something because the world says she has to be doing something. Like I want her to do what she's passionate about and what she loves. And if that is I mean, whatever, we will always support her, but I just want her to know. And like you said, I think that's so cool This that our kids are watching us build and work hard and make sacrifices. And I think that they notice it a lot more than we even think they mm-hmm. do. And I mean, that, that alone right there is worth it to me. Yeah, 100%. I'm with you. Um, I feel like I could talk to you all day. I really, really could. Like, you're my people. We get it. (laughs) I know. We we get it. We're in the same – we're like living parallel lives. We're in totally different companies, but it doesn't even matter because we get it. And all of the things you said, it's just – I love it. So thank you for coming on and sharing your background and your story. Um, How can people get a hold of you, follow you, learn more about you, all of that? What's kind of – a couple of your social media handles. So my um, personal Instagram is Jalen Schroeder, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much where you can find me everywhere. Okay. So 
I'm Jalen Schroeder on pretty much every social media outlet. And then all my links are like on that page as well. So that's my personal one. But I also do, I mean, I do a little bit of everything on there. So okay. that's probably the best place to find me. Cool. Okay. And then my favorite question, which I always say you basically are summing this up in the whole entire interview, but formally, what makes you a marvelous mom? Oh man. <laughs> That's a hard one to answer this week. I've had a rough, I've had a rough like mom month. Oh, so I feel you. It's one, it's one of those times where I'm like, I feel like the worst mom ever because, you know, I have a couple weeks left to have my baby. We just moved in. My husband just started a new job like two days ago. So it's been the craziest month probably of my life, I can say. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> you're like, am um, I even? <laughs> So just think, think beyond, know, that's... think beyond this month. Think of the best day you've had <laughs> or even just how you've conquered the worst day. How we've conquered the worst day. Honestly, I mean, I don't know if this even answers your question, but on my worst day, I mean, what makes me happy is honestly being a mom and like being around my child because the thought, I mean, the brains of little kids are so, like, pure and innocent and nothing is wrong in their world besides when they don't get, like, the candy they want or, you know, like, those <laughs> those little things. Mm-hmm. But I, I was actually reading something on um, Facebook today. I'm going to share this really quick because I think it's really cool. But it was a little story about um, this little kid asking, telling his mom that he wants to... Um, be an astronaut when he grows up and his mom's like oh that's gonna be hard work you have to go to school you have to do this you have to do this you have to do this and he's like oh well that's only four things like that's not that's not hard (laughs) and I thought that like I'm gonna share that with my team because I thought that was so cool like the the mind of a kid instead of being like oh being an astronaut could be crazy hard he said well my mom just told me it's only gonna take four things like thinking just so simple mm-hmm. about it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying my feelings right. I understand what, what you're saying. To get out, yep, but totally. I thought that was so cool. And that's totally like a kid thing. Um, having like that kid mindset. But I mean, I love, I love being an entrepreneur, but definitely being a mom has been such, such a rewarding thing, even on the crazy hard days. And it's so cool how your kids are so in tune with like your feelings. Like she knows when I'm having a bad day and she'll just come give me a hug So I love it. I love everything about that. You're amazing. You really are. You're a marvelous mom. And I'm so grateful that you've been on here and just shared everything. I know it's uplifted and inspired and probably intrigued a lot of amazing moms. So it's been so great to connect with you. And um, everybody go check her out, like we said, on social media. And you know who to go to if you need any lip scents. I mean, she's your girl. (laughs) They've even named a color after her as far as I know, right? (laughs) Yes. That's like when you know you've arrived. <laughs> Probably a color most people won't want to wear, but that's okay. <laughs> it's definitely my it's definitely my jam. It's your signature color. Word. Yep. I love it. All right. It is. Well, thanks again, Jalen. You're amazing. And everybody else listening, have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next episode.